back to the drawing board here because I think we have some information that is being misunderstood. So let me go at it again. This is the bias. And I want to sort of straighten a few things out. Everybody in here has a part to play. Everybody has a part to play. And it's really important to understand that. That everybody in here has a part to play. The parts you played in another day have nothing to do with the parts you have to play today. Nothing to do with the parts you have to play today. Just because it's your first time to step on the stage no, it doesn't mean that you don't have a very important part to play. Nobody here is stepping on the stage for the first time. However, again and again in our lifetimes, we have been part of the ones who work backstage, who did this, who did that, who were not the primary players on the stage of life that would go down in history, you see. So the fact that you were not recorded as an individual who had a part to play in a particular stage of the development of humanity does not mean your part was not important. Please understand that. Please understand that. That everybody has a part to play. And the play could not go on if everybody didn't play their part. Therefore, a fascination with who you were in your past lives can be detrimental to your willingness to play your part today. Now, in Steph's case, a lot of her past lives have come up because of her connection with Steve, you see, as they had to work through their issues. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, as exemplified by their last lifetime at Auschwitz. Over and over and over again, they had to review these lifetimes in order to figure out how they could let go of all the karmic debt, you see. So that was their story. And their story entwines with the story of others, including Jesus. Because they have known Jesus since back in Hebrew. And this is true of others too, such as me. We've all been part of the same family, the soul, same soul family. And everybody is a part of the story. Everybody is a part of the story. But just like you have families with whom you are associated in this lifetime, and yet you come together with friends who are not associated with your families, you can still work together, you see. You can still play together. So understand that going in, okay? Please understand that, as you know, for example, most of the parts that Steph played were unknown. Nobody remembers the little girl who died at Auschwitz, except the people that were there and had a part of the same story because it's story. It's Katerina's story. It's Steve's story. And it's the story of so many others who were involved back in that day. And today, the story that is happening here is a story that is going to be told and retold again and again and again. Because you are the core of your own story. You're the core of your own story. And you've come together to blend your energies in order to ascend the ladder of God energy in order to create a new reality between you that will transcend everything that's gone before. It will transcend everything that's gone before because you have climbed the stairs. We might say you climbed the golden stairs one step at a time. And sometimes you spent six lifetimes on the same step. And that's okay. That's okay. Because everybody had to go their own way at their own pace. You see, everybody has to go their own way at their own pace. And Jesus had to go his own way at his own pace, just like everybody else, just like everybody else, right? And the fact that he became the poster boy or the criminal element of humanity was not his fault, you see, but it was his part to play. 
And now he's here to say, I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I'm just a human too, who had to play his part in the best way he could. And it gave me a lot of heartburn to see what people said about me. It gave me a lot of heartburn. But that was my part to play. I had to have the heartburn, you see. So I could come back today and say, hey, I'm back. And I don't lack for things to say. I don't lack for things to say today. But I still have to play my own way. I don't have to play the way the churches tell me to play. I don't have to play the way certain people in society today insist that I play so that they can win the day and claim that they are the champions of my reality. They're not the champions of my reality. I have my own reality, just like you, just like you. And so it's really important to break that mystique, you see. It's really important to break it wide open and let all the shit out. Because if we don't do that, we cannot move forward, you see. Because if you trust on a lie, it will tie you to the karmic wheel. And so we're busting it open, not just for those of us in here, but for all of those who can hear. Even the ones that we laughed at, you see, because they laughed at me. They laughed at me when I hung from that tree. And they said, that'll teach you, King of the Jews. That'll teach you to contest our reality. And so I don't mind laughing at them a little bit. Because they need to know what it feels like. They need to know what it feels like. When I laugh at them and say, boy, you're jerks today. How dare you to treat another human being like they were a donkey that had to carry all your sins for you. How dare you? And I won't spare you from my wrath, you see, because my wrath belongs to me. I get to be angry if I want to be angry. I get to be happy. I get to laugh because I'm free. I'm not in a cage, you see, with the Ten Commandments on the wall. That say to me, you got to do this, you got to do that. And I don't even know what they mean because they've been translated and mistranslated so many times. Nobody really knows how to make them right with their reality. And so they just do what they want to do and tell everybody else that they have to comply with the Ten Commandments, you see. And so you get someone like Trump bumping his Bible upside down and saying, hey, I wear the golden crown today. Because I trust on God, you see. And he trusts on nothing, nothing, except his ability to be so confused that he has refused to accept reality. He refuses to accept reality. Every word that comes out of his mouth is a lie, practically. And it's an effort to deceive those who think that they have to rely on a bigger lie. And the bigger lie, you see, is that I did die for your sins. I died because of your sins. I died and I was crucified because of those who thought that they had the right to kill another person, you see, just because they disagreed with them. And that is the problem in the USA today. There's so many people that think they get to kill their neighbor, you see, just because they don't look like them, act like them, think like them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so because they trust on that lie, they will die to reality because they'll have to go figure it out, you see. They have to figure it out. We can't keep going on this way. We just can't keep going on this way because the fate of humanity is at stake, you see. Will we grow up or will we continue to sit around and throw temper tantrums and pretend that we don't have to take responsibility 
for the toys we threw at somebody else that clonked them in the head. We got to stop playing that way. And I'm not just picking on the Republicans here because there's a lot of people who identify as Republicans who hate the, who hate as Democrats who hate the Republicans as much as I do. I'm just kidding. And so we need to let go of our animosity. And we need to say, well, we know you guys are really, really stupid. However, we have to help you to see it from our point of view. Because if we don't help you to see it from our point of view, then how are you ever going to understand us, you see? How are you ever going to understand the way that we see you? Unless you can see it through our eyes, you see? So how does that happen? How are we going to get people to see it from our point of view? Now, most of you in here have come to see that we're all at different levels of understanding of reality. And as we climb the mountain, we can see below. We can see the people climbing below, right? But we can't always see the ones above us. Sometimes all we can see are their asses. And sometimes we think they're asses, you see, because we can't see what they can see. And so the people that mock you are the people that will be the ones who get mocked, you see? And so we play both sides of that game. However, when we come to see that we can never give to another what we don't receive, then we don't worry about it. I've been mocked and mocked and mocked, and I have said to myself, well, let it be, let it be, Jesus, because they can't see reality. And then when I can find somebody who can see reality, I say, hooray, hooray, let's be friends today, because we can both climb this mountain together, you see, or we can climb it as a group. And it'll be a lot easier if we can tie ourselves together and use our picks axes to hold each other up. And if somebody falls, they won't go too far because the rope will pull, pull taut and we'll pull them back up, you see? So let's climb together and not have to try to throw rocks down on the people below us or shoot down the ones above us, you see? Let's just focus on our own climb. And if we need to stop for a little bit and say, well, We've really climbed pretty far, and we can see where we used to be. And where we used to be was pretty stupid, you see, because we couldn't see things from here. And so we just keep climbing, and we say, what do we do when we get to the top of the mountain? Like someone asked today, they said, if you get to the top of the mountain, do you have to fall down again? And... This is a good question. And Steph did say to that person today, well, I don't think so. I think once you see the light shining bright and you understand that it casts the shadows you see and that you have to have both the dark and the light to see anything at all, then you let go of your anxiety and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. You can't go backwards, you see. You can't go backwards. So what happens when you get to the top of the mountain? Well, you fly. You spread your wings and fly. And you can fly through the countryside and you can alight wherever you want to alight. And you can see the people on the mountain. They're climbing up the mountain, trying to reach the top, wondering what's going to happen when we reach the top because they don't know they will fly. And that is the way that we will continue to live in peace and harmony. Because if they come after us, you see, they won't be able to catch us because we've already flown away. And when they get to the top of the mountain, they too will learn to fly. And then they will say, hey, it's more fun to just soar through the sky than to try to kill the ones who don't think like me, you see?
So now let us talk about your reality. Tobias, are you still there? Or did you go away to comb your hair? So you would look good for the presentation of your storyline. Tobias says I'm here. And I know that my dear friends will forgive me if I strut a little as I did play some very important parts in my day. But over time, I've come to see I played some pretty shitty ones too, because we all do. And that was the point of the story that Steph had to tell, is that the man who saved humanity had to be the one that killed them, you see, even though he didn't want to be. He didn't want to be the one who saved humanity, and he didn't want to be the one who killed them. It's just his part to play. And so we have no right to condemn anyone. Because if we're going to climb that mountain, you see, as you climb the mountain, you come to see the valley where you had your energy secured, you see, so that you wouldn't have to climb the mountain. And you come to see that if you turn upside down and you're in the valley, the mountain looks like a valley to you. And therefore, it's a little hard to tell which way to go. It's a little hard to tell which way you're going. And we all get confused from time to time. And Steve got confused from time to time. And sometimes he flew high, you see, because he grew and grew and grew through his willingness to try to help humanity. And sometimes he got shot down, you see. Well, actually he got shot down a lot and he just got tired of being shot down, you see. And so he lost his wings and he had to earn them back. And that was how it happened that he and Steph had to go through all these lives, you see. So he could win back his wings and why he had to explain to humanity that if you want to fly, you've got to die to the old reality. You have to let go of your hate and your animosity. You have to look at someone like Rudolf Hoss and say, well, I love him today because I've come to see that I'm no better than he. I have to play my own parts from deep in the gully to high on the hill because I have to be able to learn to distinguish the ground from the air, you see? Because I'm going to fly, I don't want to be confused and turned upside down. Have you ever... Heard the stories of pilots who got so confused they didn't know if they were going up or down and crashed their planes. Well, you got to learn the rhythm that exists between heaven and earth, you see, so you can feel comfortable between the two and know when you can alight on a tree and say, cheep, cheep, and when you can fly and say, hey, this makes my day. So please don't worry because you won't be stuck on the top of the mountain sitting there every for eternity. And you won't have to slide back down the mountain, you see. You'll just fly away. And this is also the story of the butterfly that eventually you must evolve, you see, into the butterflies. And so all those caterpillars who are afraid of the dark night of the soul are coming to see that it's not a, such a dark night of the soul as it is a time for rest. It's a time to close your eyes and say, hey, I'm going to let go of my past, you see. I'm going to let go of my past so that I can accept the future. Because as long as I trust that I must always be a caterpillar, 
I'll be afraid to face the dark. I'll be afraid of my cocoon, you see. I'll be afraid to climb that mountain because I don't know what will happen when I get to the top where I can hardly breathe because the air you see is so rare. And it's rare, you see, because so few people, so few people dare to claim, climb that high. So now let us see if we can give you a little more help to rhyme your own past and present. So you can let go of your past and accept the future. So the importance of learning your past, you see, is not to puff you up and say, well, I was that person that day. It is only so that you can learn to accept the hard lessons you had in that life. Because it doesn't matter. Jesus is one of the most famous people in the world today. And he had one of the hardest lives you ever did see. And so for him, it has been a process to process it. And having good friends that will say to you, I'm here to listen to you and to love you just the way you are. It is so helpful to all of us in processing our past lives, you see. So let's get started.